Thomas Nayatomi's brother died from malaria four years ago. Thomas misses him very much. If his brother had gone to hospital right away, he might still be alive. But he didn't realise he had malaria. After going to the hospital, he was very, very sick. I Many he he could not make uh, back home alive. Then uh, he died. Thomas and his brother used to make music together. Now Thomas must compose songs like this one on his cell phone, on his own. Malaria is an infectious disease transmitted by mosquitoes. We travel through Western Kenya to see how people are trying to protect themselves against it. Like at this school in Kizi. Malaria is a killer disease. Malaria is a killer disease. The children learn how to protect themselves from mosquitoes in a playful way. But fear sometimes looms large. I'm scaring because one day I saw my friend being bitten. I was sleeping with my friend and I saw him bitten and he was crying for help. His friend is fine and the boys are now learning how to live with their fear. Gatson sings a rap song he wrote to reassure his fellow pupils. The song's message is that something can be done about malaria. And something is being done in this green portable building. Here, two aid organisations, the Kenyan NGO Alliance Against Malaria, or KINAM, and the British international health charity Merlin, are working together. They also receive support from the US Agency for International Development. Their campaign to eradicate malaria uses basic materials, like kangas, a traditional garment worn in Central and Eastern Africa. Generally, a kanga is uh, used by women and uh, to wrap around their, their waist, as you can see I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as they're moving around, they're passing the message about uh, malaria and uh, mosquitoes. This hospital lies on the outskirts of Kizi. Pregnant women are particularly vulnerable to malaria, but many aren't aware of that. Grace Omoyu was one of them. She didn't want to go to the doctor because she didn't have much money. Then Grace learned that she and her unborn baby were at risk from malaria. And she heard about the free kangas. The skirt reminds the 33-year-old to come for regular checkups. Here they also provide her with a mosquito net for free. In Kenya, half of the people still live on less than $2 a day, and most of them are women. So they're the ones the aid organizations are trying to get to come to hospitals to learn about malaria. The anti-malaria activists are meeting with the Kenyan government and the World Health Organization. They're trying to better coordinate their efforts due to changing circumstances. We have noticed the issue of uh, increased malaria in areas that where there were no malaria initially. And this is where climate change uh, concerns uh, her currently, because malaria has been climbing up the highlands. In the tea growing region, the Kenyan highlands, the nights are no longer cool enough to kill off the mosquitoes that transmit malaria. They breed rapidly at temperatures of 18 degrees Celsius and higher. Peter Onayabwangi contracted malaria and survived, since he was given medication right away. I was luck. I'm not dead. That's why you are showing me today. I'm here. Yeah. But he and his family have learned that, when it comes to malaria, you shouldn't just leave things to chance. Peter's son now volunteers as a health worker. He visits waiting rooms and hospitals and informs people about the disease. 
He explains how people contract malaria, how to recognize the symptoms early and which medications help, including preventative treatments. The volunteer tells them that mosquitoes only transmit malaria. The disease is really caused by a parasite, which attacks the liver and poisons the blood. Most of all, he wants people to know that mosquito nets are widely available and hospitals even hand them out for free. And that they should spread the word. Okay. But that's not all. The World Health Organization hopes to eradicate malaria with the help of pesticides. Since mosquitoes often gather on the inside of walls at night, Kenyan authorities now systematically send out teams to conduct indoor residual spraying. The mosquitoes then carry the poison back to their brood and die. The insecticide, made by Swiss firm Syngenta, is widely used in Europe to protect crops. Sprayed rooms need to be aired out for two hours before residents can enter them again. Thomas Nayatoma, whose brother died of malaria, hasn't had his home sprayed yet. But thanks to raised awareness about the disease, he now uses a mosquito net for protection. And he makes sure to close all the windows tightly at night. <laughs> 